Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of InfusionCast. Today is a jam-packed video walkthrough of my buddy Paul Sokol's Infusionsoft app and how he says it, has it set up for his metal group. I think you're really going to enjoy it. It's uh, pretty interesting how he delivers a demo and that sort of thing. And I know a lot of you are probably driving in your car or on a subway or something like that and can't watch this. I totally get it, but it is really, really worth your time. So if you text the word Mad Scientist to 33444, I'm going to send you a link directly to this interview where you can watch it and download Download it and that sort of thing. So remember, Mad Scientist, it's all one word to 33444. It'll ask for your email, you send me your email, and boom, I will send you a link directly to this video. It's about an hour plus. Um, there's a lot of great information here. I learned so much about how I can optimize my own Infusion Soft app, and I know you will too. So yeah, text in Mad Scientist to 33444 to receive this video. Thank you so much for listening and or watching. And I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you're at. Let's get into it. How the heck do you use Infusionsoft? How do you make it work for you? Welcome to Infusioncast, the only podcast that shows you the tricks of the trade and teaches you how to be an Infusionsoft expert. Join your host, Joshua Millage, as he sits down with Infusionsoft pros to hear their stories and experiences making Infusionsoft work for them. Ready? Here's Joshua. We're back with another episode of InfusionCast. Today we're switching it up with a little face-to-face. -face. You get to see me in the soundproof man, man cave here, and we're going to do a little screen capture. I have today Paul Sokol, the campaign building mad scientist over at Infusionsoft. And uh, this episode is for you if you want to be inspired and, and think bigger, think much bigger soft and what the app is capable of and paul thank you so much for coming on and doing this with me thanks for having me josh i'm very excited to sit down and kind of get nerdy with you yeah i'm <laughs> pumped on it yeah cool man so so tell me first of, off like what you're using this app app for personally for personal projects so tell me about the project first and foremost because i think it's pretty cool <laughs> yeah yeah so i'm a, i'm a drummer in a heavy metal band out here called elevagar in uh in phoenix and uh what I'm using Infusionsoft for is, to, of course, to collect a mailing list, but mainly as a demo delivery system. Uh, and most people, you know, a lot of bands out here, you know, they'll have a couple of demo tracks and they'll, you know, print them out on a CD or whatnot, or they'll put it on their band camp or something, and they're not really doing anything to, to build their list here. So I figured, well, heck, this is just, you know, this is basically the lead magnet. The lead magnet is here's my demo tracks. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I created. I created a, a demo request page and uh, people can choose their email preferences using a drop down if they want to get live show updates or music or, or none. Because if they're not local, then there's not really any need for them to get blown up about shows. Mm -hmm. And then on the back end, it delivers uh, the demo tracks and it's a uh, standard standard issue follow-up, you know, so if they don't download it right away, they get another email in three days and then another one a week after, and it's all tracking via link-click goals. And uh, there's four tracks on the demo, and so there's four different link-click goals, so I can actually see who's downloading what. And um, then on the back end of that, there's actually a little surprise, uh, which I want to try and build, uh, build in those habits and make people want to open and want to click because they don't know if there's going to be a little surprise on the back end. So for people that do download any of the tracks, there's a little do-it-yourself poster that they get the next day that it's completely unpublished, you know, as far as like, you don't know. It's just like a little surprise. Here's a little wow. Uh, and then of course, depending on what channel they came through, uh, we'll invite you to follow us on that channel if we have a social property. In most cases, we're always going to invite you to follow us on Facebook because that's kind of our main social hub. Uh, but like uh, what I've done is, I, so I built that whole thing out, mm -hmm. got it working, and you know, there's a hidden lead source field in it so I can drive different traffic to it to see you know, what's converting. Mm -hmm. And then as we started to get more social channels, so like we, we started off on Facebook and then 
we built a Twitter because we want because we use Meerkat to live stream all our rehearsals and all our live shows if possible. And like we have a YouTube, you know, to post some teaser trailers, things like that. So for each one of those channels, I just made a clone of that original landing page, and all the content is the exact same. The only thing that's different is at the top, it'll say, you know, attention YouTube users or attention Meerkat users or whatever. Mm-hmm. And the links in the profile or the about page are pointing, you know, directly to that Twitter specific page or YouTube. So when they leave that Twitter channel, the first thing they see is attention Twitter users. And they're like, okay, I'm in the right place. And it also kind of builds that uh, it's just that good, it's a smooth transition, it's a good experience, like, oh, I'm supposed to be here because I came here from Twitter, mm-hmm. um, and, and I would assume that would help opt-in rates. I definitely don't have anywhere near enough data to statistically say, yeah, that's true, because we're super, super niche, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, but it works, and then, of course, that gives us the ability, if somebody opts in from the Twitter page, you know, obviously, we can put it on Facebook, but then we say, uh, hey, why don't you also follow us on Twitter, too, if you haven't already. Or if they opt in for Meerkat, hey, why don't you go ahead and, you know, follow us on Twitter. Um, stuff like that. And the results are pretty pretty exciting. I think we've got, I don't know, I'd have to check, maybe about 30 to 33 demo requests since we've made this live, uh, I don't know, maybe the past six months. Like I said, real niche, real targeted, not a, not a huge audience. But there's about a 60 to 70 percent download rate, like a redemption cool. rate, um, which for anybody out there, you know that that that's pretty wild. You know, if you're yeah. offering a lead magnet and 50 percent of people actually download it, like that's a good day. Yeah. So the fact that we're able to get much higher numbers than that, and um, yeah, and people love it. Yeah. It's uh, it's really cool, and it completely automates that whole demo process, while also has the benefit of collecting an email list. So now it's just, hey, you want our demo? Go here. You know, as opposed to me having to, oh, let me get my CDs printed out or let me waste money right. printing out CDs, uh, you know, or hey, go to my band camp where I can't do anything with it. We fully control it and we fully own it. And uh, I think it gives us an advantage of making us appear bigger than we are. Mm-hmm. We just started doing shows in April and uh, there's there's already a decent buzz from the few fans that we do have and I think it's just because there's that it's that professional big act mm-hmm. uh, experience mm-hmm. you know even huge bands like you know Megadeth and Metallica or they're kind of doing a newsletter you know but when you come to like a local band here nobody's doing that right you know even some of the bands that are on the major labels don't have anything like that it's it's way too sophisticated for it so uh, of course, music is a business, and I'm running it exactly like a business. And the cool thing is, I'm throwing everything that I know at this, yeah. Because I don't have to explain to anybody what I'm doing. I just I know what I'm doing, so I'm just going to build it, and I know it's going to work. And I don't yeah. have to tell other people why it's working. You know, that's really exciting too, because I, I I think that um, a lot of times, like we don't, you know, for me, I was in a band in high school, and we we got like sponsored and got on a tour and toured all over the U.S. And I remember like having like the the notepad that people would write down like their email addresses and then inputting them and then putting everyone in like the bcc field and dude it was just it was insane and like to even think about like delivering uh any sort of of demo uh that would just been been too much but you're right i mean music is a business and it's and it's about relationship too because music is Mm -hmm. so uh, personal in a lot of ways and so people to to scale that human touch with what you're doing with infusionsoft is is really really cool um and so so tell me a little bit about it like let's dive in a little bit Is, is there any way we can screen share the campaign I'd be happy to. I don't know. Can we do that on Skype? Yeah, Skype. Skype can, I can, I can actually just, when it changes, it'll capture your, because I was thinking about like, um, the, the, the connection points. It'd be cool to just see how that all works if that's okay. Yeah, I'll I'll happily peel up the hood. It's not, it's, I mean, depending on your level of Infusionsoft expertise, it may be overwhelming for someone like you. It's probably going to be like, really, that's it. It's that simple, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I have, I have nothing to hide, man. Cool, cool. Thank you for doing that. I I, uh, I just know that a lot of people have, they're 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 moving out of that like using Infusionsoft as a glorified Aweber stage, and and really pushing into it. And so I think it's cool to see some of the um, the things that you're doing. And uh, so you're using a click goal, 
So when they click the link in the email, then it triggers the, the next step. Yeah, I've got the list of campaigns up if you want to do the screen sharing thing. I've never done that. Actually, on Skype, if you just hit the... Boom. Perfect. Me? It's, good? Be it's a beautiful thing, my friend. Wonderful. So, um, so you can see you got a bunch of stuff set up for Elevagar and specifically every single show that we do, I have a little mini campaign running for that too, but let me show you the main, the main thing. So this is the, uh, the, the glimpse demo. That's what we call it. And, and the request, uh, the other thing that I've done is on our Facebook page, you can set up a call to action link. And uh, so I set one for book now, and then I set up a specific booking page as well that also gives them the demo. Because obviously, if oh, someone's trying to book us for beautiful. a show, you know, they're probably going to want to know what's up. So, 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 oh yeah, because Facebook did have that new update. So that call to action link goes then to the uh, the landing page that you've created. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Yeah, Perfect. It is. It is. So let's. So. There's a there's a campaign Jedi code that's out there that uh that, that I developed and one of the tenets of it is there are no final forms there's always uh you know there's always enhancements here and so <laughs> while this looks like it's crazy uh, I mean if we look at the versions that are here you can see that there's been many many publishes of this since September and at you know months apart mm -hmm. and that's because it's all been growing and evolving so originally the demo request was just this uh, and not the booking stuff because that was new it was just landing page here's the demo here's the here's the link trip link click goals to track it and then the poster delivery mm -hmm. and i think i did have a like us on facebook uh as well here Got so it. let me show you uh well i guess i mean you drive here i know what this is looking like well how deep do you want to you know let's just go it step by step it'd be great to i'd love to just see even the landing page if you don't mind okay yeah and, yeah and just kind of go through that the decision diamond the sequence it'd yeah. be really cool that's fine with me buddy this is really fun <laughs> it is it is it is so um okay so i've got a got a google uh, Google Tags tracking pixel in here. That's something that's new. So now we can kind of do like remarketing here. And and um, just so people know that you put that in that non-visible HTML element. Um, mm -hmm. And that's something I want people to understand is you could put all a numerous different types of cool tracking codes depending on what other services. Um, that's a valuable thing to know, yeah. I think. Yeah, so. for sure. Especially because we don't, we don't have websites. So everything is just hosted, just hosted landing pages, all that jazz. Cool. Uh, so so download the demo, you know, cool little image, mm -hmm. you know. So give us your name, email, and then what kind of email updates do you want? And so this is that uh, this is that drop down. Got it. Choose. Actually, let me just go to the actual live page, um, because your copy is brilliant. I just oh, saw you. I saw below. Spam is not metal. <laughs> yeah, no, spam, it's not metal. That's true. That's um, awesome. So there you go. And this little box around the sidebar, that's just a little that's just a little code snippet that I stole from I think Cami Sheaf shared it somewhere back in the day and I just threw it into my Evernote because I would know that I'd need it. Cool. Um, but it kind of creates a little visual aspect here so yeah what's your first name what's your best email address what kind of updates do you want so either none or music live show or all updates um and the call to action is just email me the demo it's pre-framing them it's saying this is what you're gonna get mm -hmm. brilliant and then so that's it again real simple not a whole lot going on here pretty pretty standard landing page i'm sure it could be you know, optimized and all that jazz, but it, it does... Uh, no, but that's brilliant because because I think that uh, sometimes we tell ourselves that we need to make it complicated to have a big impact, and this is just not true. I mean, you can have a really focused, simple landing page that has a lot of cool things on the back end to help segment people and give them what they want and speak to them in the way that they want to be uh, spoken to, which is what you're doing there with what kind of email updates do you want, which is awesome. Yeah, and especially for this audience, I mean, they're not, you know, it's mostly millennials, mostly younger people, so it's not, they're not super email heavy and stuff like that, and even this is, you know, again, nobody else is doing this, so mm -hmm. it's 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 still kind of different and unique for them here, and of course we got our little sharing elements down here, I don't know if anybody ever uses those, but hey, why not, right? Why not have it, right, yeah, cool. Uh, 
So then that that pushes people into and I noticed you had a, the meta description set up, which is important, and and tags set up for people to to check out. Um, cool. So this is the thank you page. This is what they see after they hit the submit button, and uh, and you're, it looks like you're merging the first name. That's awesome. So adding that personal touch there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's just another quick wow. It's like whoa, that's super cool. And again, it has it's just that professional feeling. Like wow, these mm-hmm. guys are really on the ball with what they got going on. Here. Yeah, and I think that's one of the powerful things about utilizing Infusionsoft uh, hosted landing pages and thank you pages is it's so easy to to make that uh, pass through data to the thank you page. Um, I know you can do it in WordPress and, and other things too, but yeah, it's the easiest I think in the, the landing page builder and in Infusionsoft. Yeah. For sure. So here's that decision diamond, right? So everybody goes into the demo delivery because that's what they wanted. And they're only going to go into like us on Facebook if their newsletter does not equal none. So if they selected anything besides none, then it's okay for me to hit them with Facebook and other things. Because again, I don't want it. Last thing I need is to get hit for spam for trying to down, you know, for trying to give people a demo. Got it. So that was in the, uh, the drop the down uh, on the landing page if they yeah. say none. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So then they go into the uh, the demo. We'll, we'll look at the social invites later, but uh, okay. so the demo delivery again, pretty standard stuff. You know, immediately, then three days, uh, and then four days. This was this was a patch that I added in. I was driving people from my personal newsletter to the band newsletter, and so I again, I was just doing some fanciness. So don't worry about this tag <laughs> stuff. It's not important. I know what it's doing. It's a one-time use thing. Got it. Um, so then as far as the demo delivery stuff, you know, real simple, real straightforward. And actually what I'll do is I'll use the link click goal so we can look at all three of the emails real quickly. But anyway, that's the structure. Cool. Um, so right away, three days at 10.30 a.m. and then four days at 6.30 p.m. And then I always like to put a timer at the end of it to give people time to respond. Uh, because otherwise they'll be queued in the sequence immediately as soon as that's sent. But real life... People have to have time to respond. So that keeps them active in that sequence for a week. And then that just gives us more data to see, you know, do people actually never download it and get queued or, you know, do most people download it? And that's that's, that's brilliant. See. That's brilliant. I think that that's a really applicable tip to a lot of different campaigns. So you just leave that there yeah. again. So you, you they remain active before they bump into the, the next step. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Uh so this is the first, oh, by the way, pro tip, guys, uh, if you ever want to quickly look at a bunch of different emails in a sequence instead of having to click in and click in and click out, just grab a link click goal and connect it up, and you can easily flip through all the emails and then just get and then just delete the goal when you're done doing a quick look. Mm-hmm. Um, so here we go, our first email, you know, download it right away. Um, this sentence right here, just so you know, one's an intro and two is the actual song. That is a data-driven decision because the first, you know, 10 or so people, a lot of people downloaded the first track and then not everybody downloaded the second, third, or fourth track. And so I'm thinking, well, crap, maybe they think that all of it is just this ambient weird stuff. <laughs> um, and it's not. There's just an intro track here. Uh-huh. Uh, so we did that. These, of course, are the um, – uh, these are just file attachment snippets because they're all MP3s. They're all smaller than 10 megs here. Um, and remind me, to, remind me to talk about the email preferences. I'll talk about that in a second before I forget. Okay, cool. Um, but you notice most of these emails are basically the exact same, you know? Mm-hmm. So, oh, the other thing is leveraging the preheader heavily because that's what's going to show up in the preview, right? So you got the subject line, and then you'll have the preheader after it. Um, and that's kind of like, it's almost like a subheadline to the subject line. Uh, and it can help oh, boost open rates. So actually... Fascinating. Yeah, I just learned something new. <laughs> that's a that's a really cool pro tip that I learned from DJ Waldo, um, way back in the day, and it's 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 just so heavily underused because most emails will preview right, and what do you usually see? You know, can't see this email. Click here, and it's like obvious that okay, this is some automated email. Yeah. Um, so so that that actually just so I know so like in Gmail, you see the subject, and then that it's usually like a lighter color, and it's it's usually the starting of the email but you're utilizing that as almost a a a call to action in a way to get people to click yeah yeah to to get that open 
because mm-hmm. the entire point of a subject line is to get the email open. Just like right. when you're doing direct mail, the whole point of the envelope is to get that thing open. You can have the best letter in the world, but if nobody opens it, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Um, and so massaging the subject line and the pre-headers together, so you know, so you got real clear, download, glimpse demo, it doesn't need to be fancy or or cute or whatnot. You requested this, here's the email right away, it's coming from Elevagar, boom. Mm-hmm. That's it. You know, and then listen to glimpse right away, that's the whole, And that know, shows up right after. Get in so then, that's three a- days later in the morning, if they haven't downloaded it, and I'm going in here because I want to show how the subject lines and the pre-headers work with each other. No, it's a, it's beautiful because these are the things that are often overlooked that can have some serious impact. Mm-hmm. So then three days reminder, listen to the Glimpse demo. Don't hesitate. Give Glimpse a try right away, you know, because we know that they haven't seen it yet. And then with the email, it opens up, hey, good morning, first name. A couple days ago you requested it. Want to make sure you had a chance to listen to it. Um, and then the rest of this email, again, is basically the exact same as it was, and, and in this case, we're kind of teasing them, hey, there may be a surprise once you download it, just to, again, try and boost that engagement, but then everything else is the same. Mm-hmm. Um, so That's awesome. I basically wrote this first email, cloned it, cloned it, changed like two or three words, all right, that's done, cloned it, changed two or three words, and so then this one goes out one full week after uh, in the evening. That's beautiful. Is there any logic or... Uh reason that you chose three days and then four days anything like i know some people have a lot of thought they put into their delays um i'm i'm just kind of doing it that seems to be a good time frame as far as effectively getting people to take action that are good mm -hmm. without spamming them you know you could do you know day one day two day three it just kind of all depends on your audience and again for this audience these are like millennial metalheads they're not super big into email anyway yeah. Um, and, and now that I think about it, I should probably change this last timer to go out at like 1030 at night because yeah. looking at the data, seriously, that's when I get yeah. the most opens when I'm promoting shows. You know, everybody's, you know, either up late or they've got a night job or they're in school and, you know, they're just night owls. You know? Yeah. No, that's, um, a, that's a great point. And the, the other thing, too, that I like that you're doing here is you actually are following up. I think a lot of people just fail to follow up and they're, they're afraid of spamming. So they don't do anything. But with the power of infusion softening, the ability to, to set things at different intervals, you can put that fear to rest because you don't have to hit someone boom, boom, boom. You can hit them in a different interval. Like you said, you know that people are night owls. You can hit them at the sweet spot of, of when they're up. Um, I love that. Absolutely love that. And, and the other thing too, just so people remember what we just showed them is if they do click, something's going to happen. So they're going to be pulled out. They're going to they're gonna go into another phase. They're not going to continue to get the next few emails. I just want to bring that up because I think a lot of people who have come over from some sort of linear, just email-focused software, MailChimp, Aweber, whatever else, that idea is really new to them. you know. And so uh-huh. I want people to know that based on their behavior, we're going to do something different. And if they don't do anything, which is still showing us behavior, we're going to do something different, follow up with them. And the, the purpose here is to get them to, to d- download and listen to the demo. Yeah, and I want to highlight what you just said there. That's the second campaign commandment. Um, I don't know if it was for like a, a certified partner webinar or something. I, I don't know. But it, the commandment is a sequence, Every everything in a sequence should be driving for the next immediate goal. Mm. So every single thing in this sequence is focused on one explicit goal. That's to get them to download at least one of these tracks. And as soon as that's done, that sequence has done its job. And then it can move on, Mm -hmm. you know, so that's important to keep in mind when you're designing your campaigns, whatever the next immediate goal is, like, sure, maybe ultimately trying to sell something, but you got to focus on those micro conversion points. And that's all you should be talking about. And that's all you should be driving people to is that next immediate goal or goals, depending on what your strategy is. Yeah, it it is something that really needs to be highlighted because the, the, the problem that I've seen with a lot of clients I've worked with or, or people who are getting new and infused stuff, they'll send an email and then they want it to do five things. And it's just lost all of its effectiveness. I mean, yeah, even just totally in copy, like from a copy standpoint, you want to be directing people with the words in the email to do that one thing, whatever that one thing is. Yeah. So, there should, With the exception of like maybe a newsletter type communication, sure. mm-hmm. an email should have a single call to action, only a single call to action maybe a secondary response mechanism. Um, but again, that's that would be something that you'd want to use strategically. You cool. know, it's something you see commonly in like uh, like direct mails where, hey, 
you know, call us to book an appointment. But if you're not quite ready, call this phone number for a recorded message, you know. So, like, a secondary response mechanism. But really, in an email, try and keep it simple. You mm -hmm. know, an email is just a communication channel. And in most cases, you're trying to drive them to a website somewhere. You're trying to drive them to, you know, take some action and say, yeah, I want an appointment or whatever. So, yeah. just keeping that focus. That's, yeah, it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Mm -hmm. Um. So this is that last email here. Uh, and final I, notice, download I, it. I was going to say, that that's interesting to me. So you changed, it's it's the download moved out of the bracket, so you're highlighting the final notice to let them know that this is, this is it. There's, there's no more emails after this. Yep, and then the, the pre-header does the exact same thing. Last chance, no more reminders here. Um, and one thing that I've learned is that when you're merging in somebody's name into the subject line, Joshua, it's usually better to do it at the end of the subject line because that's more natural. Mm -hmm. Like, if I were to sit there and type up an email, I don't think I'd be like, Joshua, check this out. I'd be like, hey, check this out, Joshua. You know, it just... Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. How do we speak, little, right? Like, exactly. I'm not like, Paul, do you want a sandwich? You know? <laughs> 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 hey! <laughs> it's like you're yelling at people when you put it at the beginning the whole time. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a great point. <laughs> totally. And in general, I've noticed that, yeah, you can have clever subject lines to get open rates and things like that, but the more in alignment the subject line is with what you're trying to get out of the email, the more effective it's going to be. Final notice, download the demo. I don't need to be fancy or cute. I want you to download the demo. Mm -hmm. Period. You know, that's Done. it. And then this starts off with, uh, are you having a good blank afternoon blank? Okay. You know, because so we tell know me it's a... going out in the evening. Got it. It's going out at six thirty, and this is merging in whatever the day of the week is that it sends. So are you having a good Friday afternoon, Joshua? We aren't, because a week ago you requested a demo and you still haven't downloaded it. No more reminders. <laughs> Boom. You know, get it. And again, rest of the email is the same. Now, Paul, go, scroll back up to that uh, that merge field. The day of the week. Mm -hmm. it, this where is this available? I, I, I Great question. This is one of my favorite things to use ever, especially when you're doing like sales pipeline based emails. Uh -huh. When you close the email, it says, "Hey, have a great you know Thursday." It's so hard for people to 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 figure out that it's an automated email, especially when it's well written. Um, and that's really an earmark of a good automated experience is that it's not. It's really hard to figure out that it's automated. Right. You know, you've truly manufactured a genuine relationship at scale without sacrificing that human element. Right. Um, but to answer your question about the date, day of the week, there's all sorts of crazy date fields in here. Um, you can just have the current date, day of the week, which I use a lot, day of the month, which would be numerically day of the month, you know, current month, month of the year. So this is what people will do for a um, cool little hack. If you have like 50 newsletters that are pre-written and you just want people to get these newsletters literally as soon as they sign up, just merge in, you know, okay, this is the month, year newsletter. Brilliant. But it's still Month. just the first one in the sequence. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, and the one that you use is day... Is day, the day of the week. Day of the week. Okay, so that would say having a good Thursday, having a good Monday, having a good... Mm -hmm. Got it, got it, okay. Mm -hmm. And then, numerically, the current date, would that be 12 mm -hmm. 2015 or something? Okay, cool. Yeah, so it, it, it just depends. There's definitely different use cases for it, but I use day of the week all over the place. You download any of the campaigns for the marketplace, it's probably going to, you know, have a day of the week merged in there somewhere. That's awesome. That is so mm -hmm. cool. And so that's that's that. And again, campaign commandment number 2, every single thing in this flow is designed to get people to download this demo. Yep. The demo tracks and then we're tracking each link click individually so we know who's doing what. This sets up for good reporting and actually I haven't seen this. Let's let's see how this has been doing in the past uh, the past month. I have no clue. <laughs> and help help us like walk us through this performance view because I think people get kind of confused on what its purpose is and and what the different numbers are. So I noticed you moved it to historical, mm -hmm. which shows everybody who's been through the campaign in the last thirty days, which you you switched it to thirty days. Mm -hmm. Am I correct in saying it that way? Yeah, so here's a great way to think about it. The two different views are like the speedometer in your car and the odometer. <laughs> so, so active view is your speedometer. Right now, in this exact moment, what is happening? Mm -hmm. So right now, you can see that there's one person in the poster delivery sequence, and that's basically it. Yeah, and what's the number in the cloud? What's the so cloud? the number in the cloud are the number of people that are queued in a sequence. So there's, there's only three states somebody can be in. 
uh, they can either be active, you know, so for example, this person, they're in the sequence and there's still things going on. So this person hasn't clicked to download the poster. They may never, that's fine. We're waiting. Yeah, in this case, I wait a month because who cares? You right. Know, I just want to see if they're doing it. Yeah. Um, and then there's done. So whenever the sequence has done its job, AKA push them to the new, to the next goal, you know, they're done. Mm -hmm. And then queued means that they received everything in the sequence and they didn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. They, so, so think of it like a bucket. Got you it. Know, just a collection bucket. Now, here's the cool thing about when people are queued. If I were to add, so let's see, I, I wouldn't, so posted, so 18 people are queued on the poster delivery, right? If I were to add a new sequence and build it out and connect it, and obviously mark everything is ready and all that jazz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I hit publish, it's going to dump everybody that's queued into that new sequence. So everyone that's in that bucket or in that next to that cloud, because they haven't done anything to move past it, they'll just go doop into the next yep. one. Yeah, Got it's it. just like collecting a bucket of water and then dumping it into another bucket. <laughs> that's um, awesome. And that's a killer little little pro tip here. Because that is. That way, you can just say, oh, look at that. 400 people got stuck at this part in the campaign. Uh, let's offer a coupon code or something. I mean, who knows? I mean, uh, and, and the way that you just explained it is so crystal clear, Paul. And so thank you for saying it that way because I think even myself, like I know conceptually what it is, but using that bucket analogy, um, I guess I've never really thought of it that way. It's just like all I have to do is connect something else and they'll move in. So I think – there's so many use cases for that. I mean, maybe you have a campaign that's been running for a year and you're like, oh my gosh, I've got like 400 people here. Like what is maybe something that I could do to look at to reactivate a few of those people to see if maybe there's a different offer or different service or something, you know, maybe another uh, free download just to see if I can get them to raise their hand so that they can move into something else. Uh, mm -hmm. I think there's there's so much value there that we just overlook. We're like, oh, well, that they didn't do anything. That's it, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, but no, I mean, that that's that's valuable information, like as a human being. And that's my whole message is like thinking about this as scaling the human touch. What that says is they're, they weren't interested in, in, in whatever that was. But what, they, what might they be interested in? or maybe it's something maybe it's a good opportunity to do like a little bit of an open ended survey just to get their feedback. Um, mm -hmm. So that's really cool. Yeah. It is. It is. And just one thing to be aware of is that when the whole adding of a sequence, I mean, let me close hip chat. We're getting blown up here. <laughs> I know how that is. Exit. All right, cool. Um, there you go. Got our logo on my desktop, clearly. You know, always be promoting, right? That's right. right. Well, I thought that I closed hip chat here. Let's, we're going to go old school and we're going to, we're just going to flat out kill it in the, uh, Wow. Task manager. Deuces. All right. Bringing me back. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, what I was going to say about the queued is that when you connect a sequence and publish it, everybody that's queued goes in there no matter how long they've been queued. You know, so if they've been queued, so there's people that may be queued for a year, people that may be queued for, you know, a month, they're all going to get that. Mm -hmm. So what you may want to do is maybe segment out those queued. So like, for example, let's look at this glimpse demo delivery. So as you may notice, when you hover over, you get this little person symbol. Mm -hmm. What this does, this actually saves you a lot of time in terms of creating your reports. So when I click into here, this is going to take me to the report of everybody that's active in that sequence, which of course right now nobody is. Mm -hmm. But if I edit the criteria and columns, I can say, show me everybody that's queued. Got it. And uh, interesting. So you just move to the status there, and you click queued, and then you can see everyone who's yeah. been in that, or I'm sorry, everyone who's in that sequence but hasn't taken an action to move out of it. Yeah, and again, the easiest way to think about it is they've received everything in the sequence, and they didn't go anywhere. They're uh -huh. queued for something next. They're in line for the next thing. That's amazing. And then done would be the the the. Uh, would you, how'd you put odometer? Um, no, basically done means they were in the sequence and they moved to a goal further down the line. The sequence has done its job. Okay. Now, if we wanted to see all of that, can we select all three of those in the, mm -hmm. the edit columns? Cool. Yeah, so you can absolutely. see everyone who's touched in, the, in that touch point. Yep. And okay. so we can see the sequence stop date here as far as people that were queued. And in this case, you know, it's only been within like the past month or so. So it's not really that big of a deal, mm -hmm. but... If there's people that, you know, been queued over a year out, maybe I'd want to 
because you can also filter based on the sequence stop date. So I can say, you know, let's filter out people that uh, from six months to negative infinity. So, you know, to 2001, whatever. Mm -hmm. Let's tag those people as queued more than six months. Mm -hmm. And then when I, when I drag out the, uh, here, go back to the campaign here. When I drag out the sequence, I would actually drag out two, create a decision diamond, uh, and basically have it run off of that functional tag that says, okay, if they've been queued for more than six months, go here. So let me give you an example. So this is, so less than six months queued, and then more than six months queued. And for those that are watching that don't know how to clone, it is an extremely valuable <laughs> skill set to have. If you're on a PC, you would highlight whatever you want. It also works if you're inside a sequence. You highlight what you want, hold control, and then click and drag, and you'll get the little boxes. And then when you let go, it clones it. Uh, if you're on a Mac, you would click and hold first, then press control, and then drag. And uh, big shout out to Brett Martineau for showing me that. He watched me build a campaign one time, laughed at me the whole time, and then showed me how to do it. Good friend. Oh, nice. Nice guy. <laughs> but I'm so glad I learned it. It was like it's Infusionsoft 101, I think, if for just just doing things quickly and efficiently. Right. So getting to this idea is, you know, you can go use those reports, tag people as queued more than six months or not, and uh, and then if we were to publish both of these, they'd flow here into the decision diamond if they're and just flow into the appropriate place. And then that way you can ensure that it's still a good experience, you know. Or maybe you like say, you know, this is for customers, this is for non customers, you know, whatever you're looking to do. There's lots of ways to skin a digital cat here. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um so let's look at this poster delivery, right? So people download the track, you know, any of them, and then we tag what am I tagging them as? And you're oh, doing this to track, correct? Timer. That's yeah. oh, okay. Yeah, that's there's an email engage, there's a track email engagement campaign in the marketplace that is a resettable timer that tags people as hot, and then it waits 30 days, switches that for warm, then 30 more days switches it for cold, and so it's tag based. So that's why that's there. Got it. Um, you'll notice I don't have a whole lot of tags in here because I don't need them. Right. If I want to find out who's filled out a web form, I got campaign bill reports. If I want to find out who's received a certain email. I got sequence step recipients. If I want to find out who's waiting for something, uh, it's the sequence step waiting report. Mm -hmm. um, but check this out. So I've so you've downloaded the demo, and that's it. Okay, cool. Elvigar, great. Two days later in the morning, you get a little email that you weren't expecting that says, thanks, here's a free poster, Paul. DIY poster download inside. Again, we're leveraging that um, the preheader to you know, boost those open rates. Hey, good morning. Thanks for checking out the demo tracks. This is a token of appreciation. Here's a poster. Download it. <laughs> you know, that's our that's our voice. That's what we're doing. I here. love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and this poster is it's literally our logo, and then it just says depressive black metal and old English text under it. That's it. Like I put it together in Photoshop in like five minutes, and uh, but it's extra value. It's extra content. Yeah. People can print it out and use it. You know. Yeah. Um, I think I, I, that's so beautiful though because it's 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 people overcomplicate all of this. It's like I need to go hire a designer and pay him a grand and blah 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 blah. It's like no, you just need to show up a little bit differently than than everyone else shows up, and that could be yeah a, an easy kind of do it yourself poster, but it it creates that connection. Yeah, I mean, again, like it's, it's way simple. Keep keep going. Yeah, no, I just like again, like I always think it's funny. I you know I spend a lot of time in in China. Um, after my MBA program and you go to barter at, at a market and you'd say you'd buy, I bought all my fruit at a fruit market. And so like I'd buy these durian, like, you know, the, the things that smell like human flesh. Um, they're really good though. And the, 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 and the lady would always give me like a handful of mango steens too. Nice. I wasn't expecting that. That wasn't complicated. She didn't go and design a mango steen or hire someone to go farm mango steen. She just kind of had those extra around. But I always came back to her because it was that little bit of extra human touch. And, uh, and you know, it was kind of surprising. Like, she only did it the first couple times, but I always bought everything from her. And so it's like, how do I take that into here? Well, you did with the, the uh, DIY poster, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find it floating around here. Here, just poster company image oh it's is it under company files did i throw it there i don't i don't know what i'm doing anymore. you got a 
good amount of files, man. Oh, it's it. company files. Yeah, so here's the posters. So, uh, like I said, real simple. It took me five minutes in Photoshop. Boom. Here's our logo. Here's some text. Done. But it's it's sized to a normal sheet of paper, so people can print it out. You know, I think uh, I think if I remember correctly, Jan Pantoja is one of the one of the fellow certified partners. You know, he's a metalhead too. He put that <laughs> as his background. You know, you know, it's it's just so awesome. simple, real easy. Uh, all right, so let's look at. And how are you on time, man? I'll sit. Oh, and talk I'm, about I'm, this all day. no, we're good. We're good. All right, cool. Let's let's do it. And and I. This is really fun. My lunch is right after this. Oh, I'm having a blast if it's not obvious. Uh, and my lunch is right after this, so I'll happily dig into my lunchtime and keep digging, you know. No, goodness. this is so important. I, I think I've been wanting to do kind of a walkthrough, campaign walkthrough for a long time, and this is so cool because um, this is applicable to so many other industries, what you're doing. Oh, People yeah. can modify it any which way they want, but it's a, a more advanced lead magnet delivery system that is, is, be, is using some behavioral tracking to give people what they want and speak to them, how they want to be spoken to. And I think it's really powerful. So let's, let's jump into the, the next part yeah. of this. Cool. So, so what we just covered is just the, the actual demo request, right? So if people, as long as they do not select no updates, then we invite them to like us on Facebook here. And so what we do is we wait one day and then we run it at 2.30 p.m. So I want you to think about this in normal linear time because that's the only way it moves for us because we're so big, you know, and like in terms of molecular level. So they yeah. get this email immediately uh -huh. and the next reminder doesn't come out three days after. So that's why the Facebook one is timed to go one day that next afternoon because we know they're in both of those sequences, so we have to consider the timing of these emails. I so see this way, they're still going to just get one email a day at the most. Uh, and this is what a lot of people will struggle with, I think, is they have all of these campaigns launching and they put all of the timers the same, so they're blasting people with like 20 emails mm -hmm. a day. So the solution to that is to be mindful of when you're sending things and trigger them on different intervals. Mm -hmm. And think about so is do you have any suggestions on how to plan that maybe just like with a sheet of paper and or something or I mean do you just kind of do it in your head? Uh, a sheet of paper works. I mean, it, it all depends on how yeah you know, how long you've been doing it for and uh, yeah. <laughs> you know true. what you're trying to do here. A sheet of paper is really good. Just the linear flow chart, uh, planning out the different times here. When we get to the other channels, you'll see how I actually really had to sit and think about how the timing works here. Yeah. Um, but the idea here is this is super targeted. I'm not sure if this has actually boosted our Facebook likes or not, um, but it says, hey, thanks for requesting the demo the other day. Are you on Facebook? If so, go ahead and like us. And hey, if you've already listened to the demo, hit reply. Let us know what you thought. Uh, surely we could break out the intelligence and you know, say, hey, I also see you did download the demo. What do you think? But this is sufficient. Yeah. Like I said, we've got like 30 people on the list. I'm not... Now, Paul, not stressing out too hard. just just a, a, a question. If you wanted to track how that affected your Facebook likes, what, how would you approach that? Um, would you use a, a maybe grow social? Would you use some sort of just out of curiosity? So what I would do is I would do I would do this. So you'll notice that there is a link click goal after this and I'm tracking who's clicking to the Facebook page. Oh, right? OK. Yeah. So I would pull like a historical report look at that and then compare that to the Facebook insights and likes and see, okay, this person clicked through on this date and I noticed that we had two net likes on that date. So I could probably attribute, and then I, if I really wanted to dig into it, I can find out who was that person. Got and it. Hopefully reverse engineer what their profile is. Cool, got it. So it's combining the, the data that you have in Infusionsoft with the insights that you can gather from your Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. That's awesome. Totally. Um, and so, uh, it's basically the exact same in in all cases. So let's look at we'll look at one of them. So for example, Meerkat. Meerkat is an amazing little app. For those that don't know, it turns your it turns your phone into a live stream device. Wow. Uh, and it's killer. And so for bands, it's perfect because anytime we have a rehearsal, hey, you know, we're rehearsing, boom, stick it on a bookcase, and people get a free show. Obviously, it's not the same as being in there, and the sound quality is bad, and you know, we're not dressed up in our you know costumes and makeup and whatnot, but still. <laughs> It's cool. You, we can reach people that we never would have reached because they're all around the world. And then with mm -hmm. our live shows, if we can find a place to stick the thing, it you know it works really well. That's so awesome. The cool thing about Meerkat, actually, let me. Um, I'll have to hold it. it. Will it be recording the webcam too? Uh, I 
think so, but you can just turn this off real quick and then turn it sure. back on. Well, here, let me, I'll show it to you. And if anything, you can, uh, you can describe what we're seeing. Or I guess I can describe what we're seeing. So the cool thing about Meerkat, um, and again, this is kind of a pro tip. Whenever you're using any type of social channel, leverage the native things that it comes with as much as humanly possible because there's usually hidden bits of, of wisdom and gold in here. So let me give you an example here. So so with, with Meerkat, you can set what's known as the end stream button. Okay. And so with the end stream, and uh, I guess it doesn't show you, does it show you? It used to show you a preview of it. So, so cool, this works out perfect. I can just read it to you. So there's a button label that says get the demo emailed to you. And then the web address is pointing people to a bit.ly that redirects specifically to this Meerkat page. Um, so that way, uh, you know, I can do the lead sourcing, but it's still a bit.ly so I can track who's clicking and then, you know, look at my conversions and all that jazz. And I've never actually done that, but the data's there. Yeah. So when I want to dig into it, I can. Um, but there you go. So as soon as the stream is done, it's like, okay, Elvigar's live stream over. Get the demo emailed to you. Yeah. And the key word in there is email. It's priming them. It's pre-framing them that you're going to do something about getting an email. So when they click and they go to this landing page, yeah. which again, it's an exact clone of the one that you saw before. You just have the lead source set to Meerkat then? And it says attention Meerkat users. Uh-huh. That's it. But the exact same thing. Um, and then a little, a little more aggressive call to action here. This is one that we put in for the YouTube landing page. And then so when I cloned it, it, it brought over, you know, I don't, mm -hmm. again, I could probably compare, but there you go. Meerkat users, boom, you're in the right place. Um, and if I really want to do this right, I'd probably make this one a little more mobile friendly because I know if they're on Meerkat, they're most likely using a mobile device, but this still looks okay on a phone. Cool. Um, same process. They always get the demo, but let's look at the, um, let's look at the decision diamonds here. So obviously they always get the demo delivery, no problem. Um, if again, if they've selected anything besides none, we can invite them to subscribe us on Twitter and like us on Facebook, right? So now we're inviting mm -hmm. them to two channels. We always invite them to Facebook. Like I said, that's kind of our main hub. social hub. That's where we're the most active. So look at how the timing in this works. So glimpse demo delivery, I'm immediately getting an email. The next day I get a like us on Facebook and then Four days later, which would be after the reminder from the Glimpse demo, then uh, they get a, hey, subscribe to us on Twitter. Got it. So again, it, it, it's worked out, and I think I worked it out, that if they were somehow to get added into all four of these sequences, they wouldn't get two emails in one. Yes, yeah, so, so this is three days. So even though they might get a Glimpse reminder at three days, that happens in the morning. So then this invitation to subscribe on Twitter comes in the afternoon. So it's still not too much inbox overwhelm. Right. Um, that's and brilliant. That's same thing with YouTube. This way it's five days. Yeah. You know? Um, so again, they, they could get added into all, every one of these, and the most that they're going to get is two emails on day three if they've never downloaded the, the demo. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And so you just, you've set this up. Um, the way that you approach that, though, I mean, you probably just intuitively do that then because <laughs> that's like pretty advanced to, to have oh, all these yeah. parallel lines and just kind of connect the dots but yeah. it's it's a great like it's it's great to be mindful of that mm -hmm. yeah it's when you start when you start developing more advanced campaigns you really got to be present to the different campaign pathways that exist mm -hmm. how many different ways or different routes can people go through and is the messaging still relevant yeah that's and that's amazing. that's the challenge uh, so the last thing I'll show you is is the booking request, right? So let's actually take you to the page here. And by the way, I'm just delighted that I can combine my love of marketing automation with my band. You know? Yeah, yeah, um, it's really cool. It's really cool. And I think that um, and you're you're showing up like no one else has with a band. You know, like yeah, like bands does. don't think like this. You know, so it's it's really cool. Mm -hmm. So this is the call to action link. Yeah. So okay. this is the, yeah, and you can set this for anybody. And there's different, you, there's different verbiage that they give you. Uh, but book now. So go to the link. Okay. So I'm a booking agent. So again, called you can book us and inquire about booking us, and we'll send you a four track demo too. So it's the exact same. Uh, it's the exact same landing page, except we're collecting more information because usually it's just name and email. What updates do you want? 
in this case, your booking agent, we need more of your info. First and last, who's your company? Tell us about the show. What is your best phone? What is your best email? And again, we give people the option. If they don't want the demo, great. I don't care. You want to book us for a show without the demo? Fine. Yeah. That's cool with me. And then a little fun call to action. Elvagari, summon you to appear. <laughs> um, that's good. And that's, you know, this is how booking agents work. So uh-huh. then in this call to action, really similar. Uh, the main difference is that they do not go into the glimpse demo if they check that box. Got it. So, so if do not send me not selected, then they go into so using double negatives here. Got uh, it. Liking us on Facebook, same thing. Uh, so in this case, they can get invited to our top three channels, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. But they always go into the booking task. Got so it. here's something else that's really cool. I want to show you a little little Gmail hack that uh, that I've learned and I don't even remember where I learned this from. Actually, I think it was uh, it was from testing Infusionsoft, um, and it just showed up. So, so of course, elevagarbm at gmail, that's our email, and then say plus booking. Oh, not what I want to do. <laughs> so that is anything that you put after the plus in a Gmail address, it's still going to go to your core whatever, but it comes in as elevagar plus booking. So what I've done is I've set up a filter that if anything comes to that email address, it goes into a specific folder with a high priority, so that way it doesn't wow. get lost. Yeah. So, 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 yeah, so you just, so it's almost like adding a label in the actual email address itself. Mm-hmm. Yep. And Interesting. the benefit is this is really good way to test stuff in Infusionsoft because that will create a unique contact record because it does not consider that a duplicate because it's yeah. technically a different email string. Wow, that's pretty awesome. And so then, yeah, so you, you have that ready to ping you. Yep, and, and then it also you... creates a task for me, you know, booking inquiry, they're interested, call them a blah, 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 you know, whatever. And then I just handle it from here. Once booking, again, this is a progressive thing. You know, at the beginning I said that this started off literally just this little flow, and then we've been adding and piecing in extra things here. Once booking becomes like an actual, like, you know, thing that we have to worry about, you mm-hmm. know, I'll, I'll build a whole pipeline for it, you know, I'll create an opportunity instead of a task. We'll have some, you know, whatever follow-up emails, things like that. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing, man. That's a pretty cool uh, pretty cool setup that you have here for for something like a demo delivery. I love yeah, it. Yeah, right? It's so, it's so simple. Here's four, MP, here's four MP3 files. Yeah. How can you build a super engaging campaign around those four assets? Yeah. Here's how you do it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And then you have data that you can use in the future too i like the the idea that this is iterate iterative it's not it's not just uh yeah let's trash this campaign i think a lot of people just trash and start from scratch so many so so much that they are they're you're losing some value here of of how people have interacted with things in the past so this is beautiful paul thank you so much man yeah, this is this is wild. So let's. Uh, there's there's two more things I want to show you if that's okay. If yeah, you. absolutely. So you remember that I mentioned at the bottom of this email, we got this preferences, right? You know, so you selected whatever for our update list. So that again, that's that's that custom dropdown field. So it'll tell them you selected none or live show only or blah blah blah. And then here's a link to update your email preferences. Because we're using a dropdown field we can actually build a true email preferences center. Not sure if you knew we could do that. Mm. I don't know so if I did know how to do that. Well, so th- this is uh, this is the link in the bottom of, of the email. It says manage your subscription or manage. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. So here it is. It's really simple. Boom. Mind blown, right? A single one. <laughs> but check it out. What we've got is a hidden email field. Okay. They can update their email preferences, and obviously we can let them. We can let them add their last name because we don't always collect that. And so, um, uh, just and so people know that the the hidden email is really crucial because that's how uh, Infusionsoft will connect this whatever they do here to their contact record. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, specifically, you want to make sure that the auto populate with the contact is th- this this setting is checked. Mm-hmm. Because that uh, that is what will populate the hidden email field. So the the the, the, the customer experiences I click, and then I'm here. It'll pre-populate all the data. Mm-hmm. So that's where the magic is. It'll pre-populate this dropdown with whatever I've whatever updates I've subscribed to. Mm-hmm. 
you know, which is not something you can do if you're doing a tag based subscription, which I would never recommend doing tag based subscriptions anyway. Okay. Uh, and, uh, that's awesome. This is, this is also going to be a lot easier to do in the future in about a month or so. It's some new stuff we got coming to the campaign builder, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to mm, cliffhanger. Yeah. cliffhanger. I'm excited <laughs> about, I'm excited about that, whatever that is. But mm-hmm. so, so the key here though, it, and what, what's, what, why do you say avoid tags or? So, um, there, there's kind of two reasons. The first reason is that from a technical standpoint on the back end of Infusionsoft, there is a customer tag database. Okay. So if you have one person with 20 tags, there's 20 entries on that database table. When that database table starts to get to be a couple million, it will cause system slowness because literally it just has to query through this huge table database, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and so you always want to avoid tag proliferation, tag bloat. You know, if you're using a functional tag that its job is to do nothing other than control the campaign, great. Once a tag's done its job, remove it. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. if you actually you remember there's that little tag flow at the bottom of the demo delivery that I said don't worry about. And it was That's removing it a tag. It, it added a tag and then removed it 15 minutes later, right? Because it was just a functional tag to, to cue something off. Right. Um, but yeah, this is a preference center. Real easy. Uh, and Amazing. so for small businesses, you could say something, uh, it's my newsletter. So do you want like a, a monthly newsletter? Do you want a newsletter every time we have something or monthly or quarterly? You can do that. You can segment based on that. And then of course, it's, it's you know, you're accountable to being the steward of that and then only sending a quarterly newsletter to people that want a quarterly, stuff like that. Right. Um, so, but this is what you can't do any of this with tags. Not right. unless you want to get all API fancy, which is just expensive and unnecessary. Right. Right. So that so when they switch that, what kind of updates do you want to receive? What? How are you storing that again? It's that's a custom field. That's a custom field. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yep. Got it. Amazing. Mm-hmm. And you got it blank. Your preference has been set to you know. There you go. Close this window. Boom. Nice and simple. I don't send myself a notification because I don't care. Because uh, it's your preferences. Yeah. Know? And uh, even though I didn't make any changes to it, uh, I will publish it. And uh, you haven't seen this yet, probably. No. Well, give it a month. <laughs> You're on a cool new. Yeah. App, well, huh? the, well, the, all the employee, all, all, because, because as employees, we we get a we get a free app. It's one of the perks. So. Um, we that means we're also on the alpha block so we're the very first to receive stuff and and hopefully we find any major issues before you guys have to deal with it and we've actually been getting a lot better now that we haven't uh you know we we've stopped doing hard release dates and just do little monthly continuous ones yeah that's Um, awesome all right you got you got some more time i do let's all right let's keep going so let me show you how i promote our shows bonus round here (laughs) (laughs) so how do we promote shows here um a lot of ways that we can do it and what I usually do is I just clone the previous one so let's look at our most recent one uh, and actually our next show is in Tucson so I don't there's not enough people on our list to, to do that although there would be some benefit in still promoting it tell your friends in Tucson here's the event all that jazz uh-huh. uh, so here's how we do this um, we've got a campaign here and the campaign always has uh, no no merge feels here it's always got a link directly to the Facebook event page because, again, it. that's our most thing. So every time I clone, make a copy of this campaign, it's a couple of little quick updates, not a whole lot. Got it. And so th- that's something that I like to talk about too is, is trying to make things as evergreen as possible. So you've basically built a template here that can be duplicated. And a lot of people I don't even think know that that links in merge fields exist in the campaign, but you've set up a campaign link. Um, and just so everyone knows that that Paul can go in there and update that link and it updates it wherever it shows up in the entire campaign. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. And there's a huge benefit to that too, especially if you're doing like launches or whatnot, where, you know, you're linking to the same thing four times in 12 different emails. If that link ever changes, have fun spending a half an hour <laughs> doing it, or oh, you can just use a campaign link, change it in one place, republish it. Done. Done. Easy. Yep. Uh, so here's how we promote shows. So you'll notice that there's no start goal. There's no nothing. I just I publish the campaign and then I dump people that are in the all updates or the live show list because that's what they wanted. All right, mm-hmm. cool. And then the emails all come out with uh, – what show is this? 
oh yeah, this is a cool one. This is fun. Um, so hey, live this Friday at Metalheads Clubhouse. It's gonna be badass, you know. Yeah. And and you'll notice that I format <laughs> it to be, um, and whatever. There's profanity in here. We're a heavy metal band. Not really apologizing for that. So <laughs> it comes this with was the territory. For, yeah, this is for an Ocho de Mayo party, and uh, check out the official Facebook event here. Uh, and then the other thing that we did is in the PS, we said, hey, here's links to, uh, you know, the photos from our first live set that we did. You know? Right. And you're pushing oh. people back to your platform, which is uh, Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And there's that timer start tag. So, again, any link that's meaningful gets that. Um, and, of course, the, even though this is an image, it is still also linked to the campaign link. And Sorry. Just to reiterate, the, uh, the timer tag, that's using a marketplace app to – adjust yeah. something yeah let me, let me pull that up it's 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 actually really cool if you ever want to learn how to do any looping yeah looping's huge uh this is a great model to learn how to do it safely because you can do it but you can also set something up that just isn't going to work or it's going to create a weird experience mm -hmm. so track email engagement here oh, okay cool and it's uh it's a tag so these are both tag goals set for the same tag that timer start uh-huh so when the tag gets applied, this stop goal is going to fire first and pull them out of the sequence, and then this start will push them back in. And then the sequence itself is simply, uh, I should have, wow, this is really old. Uh, it basically switches between, I'll just show it to you. I don't know why I'm sitting here. <laughs> so it's a campaign that you've built, and... That's one thing. Every every stop action ha happens before every start action in a campaign, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And that's a really good thing to be aware of because uh -huh. then, because now you know how to control it more. But but here's how it is. Great times unchanged. So these are both configured for the timer start tag. Yeah, that it, cool. So it's that's what I was gonna ask. So that is the 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 tag that you're using is the same on both ends, mm -hmm. but you do have it so that anytime someone is applied. Uh, if they are in the sequence, this will pull them pull out. Pull them out, yep. Okay. Which marks them as done. Mm -hmm. So that way, when this goes in, again, Infusionsoft says, well, hey, they're done with that sequence. We can put them back in again. They can be active again. Right. That's why it works. Got it. And then what this timer does is it applies the the, the hot tag, and then it does a, a reset, so it removes the other tags, as well as the functional tag of timer start. So the next time they do it, this whole thing resets. We apply a little note. And then wait 30 days, switch warm for hot. Wait 30 days, switch warm for cold. Got and then it. what you can do is you can actually put it on your dashboard and track how engaged your list is, which is uh, which is really cool because, again, they're just all tag-based. So, um, And you notice that it's switching out the tags. Mm -hmm. So even though there's like five tags being used in that campaign, uh, it still only has one, one at a time. time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. while that all loads, I'm going to go back here. So, again, and this is the flyer that was designed – for the show, we didn't do it, and uh, I just you know pulled it off of uh, pulled it off of Facebook, and there you go. So we're linking to the Facebook event. And you're and using then, a, a pretty tight dimension there. Is that because to make it mobile friendly? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that a six hundred or? A... No, I think it's three fifty. That's, oh, three fifty. Okay. Usually, what I use. Um, I'm just curious because I, I know it's really important and it's a good. Yeah, three fifty. Three fifty. Okay, cool. Awesome. Yeah, and then that doesn't look too stupid on a desktop, and then it also looks good on a mobile, too. Right on. So live this Friday, Metalheads Clubhouse. So then the 7th was what day of the week was that? That was that was Thursday. So this would be one day before in the evening because I know that people are up. So now here's promo number two. So they haven't clicked through to look at anything yet. So $5 show. Clubhouse on Friday, you know, oh, okay, great. What a better way to kick off the weekend with metal. It's all super contextual. Yep. Um, I love it. If you have plans, you might want to cancel them because we're going to do it. It's 250 a band. Pretty sure we're worth at least 10 quarters. You know? <laughs> and then it's everything is the exact same here. Um, awesome. Yeah. And then what we also do is say, if you can't make it, hey, go ahead and check out all our upcoming shows. Yeah. Um, and, and here's something that I'm particularly proud of what we've done is we've created a photo album on facebook that is specifically flyers for the shows that we have coming up next oh cool so these are our next two shows we're going to tucson next friday and then we're opening for a really big act like these these guys naguro bungit they're from 
their black metal from Romania. They've been doing this since like '94. Like it is an wow. insane honor to be opening for them. Here we are, right at the very bottom. Um, but that's like, it's wild. But yeah. but that's the cool thing. Hey, you didn't click through. Maybe you can't make it. Hey, by the way, if you can't show up, that's cool. Look at our upcoming shows, and everything is is a funnel. It's a loop. So check it out. All of the descriptions are saying, "Hey, mark it here. Here's the official event where you can go RSVP." Wow. You know, same thing with this. Here it is, RSVP here. You know, it's it's a fun. It's just driving everybody to where they need to go. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Wow. There should never be any dead ends here. I think Tyler Gerns has a great webinar or video somewhere about talking about dead ends. You never want to have those. Right. And then this just, of course, waits basically until showtime because, again, we're tracking our people going to click through. And so, maybe if you wanted to add something, you could always add something, right? Like right mm-hmm. before or something like that. Well, check it out. That's because, again, we want to spam people, blow people up here. So... If they click on either the flyer link or the Facebook event link, then there is the day of promotion. Uh-huh. So at 30 the day of the show, because we know that they've clicked, here's a cool little reminder. And it's not just a reminder. Hey, see you tonight? Hey, we're playing tonight. You know this, but here's why I want to tell you about this. But, but here's actually why you're getting this email. We do have some shirts left over from our first show. Some are sold out. Click here to see what they look like and get some of the surprise details. <laughs> You know, I love um, it, man. And then also, hey, check out this trailer we uploaded to YouTube. So again, if they can't show up, great. Here's other things for them to do. But then here's the. Uh, so this is just a thank you page. This doesn't even go anywhere. You know, like not any particular website, but it says, "Great, we've got shirts. Uh-huh. You spend ten bucks, you get exclusive access to a pre-production download of our EP. No vocals, but here it is. And then here's the shirt. You know, we only printed fifty, but there's thirty left. So run to our booth when it's done. When they're gone, they're gone. Nice. And that's in the email. And this is only going to be shown to people that click through to the Facebook event. So decent probability they'll show up. So now it's now it's relevant to say, hey, we have shirts. Come by. Right. Yep. And then, of course, we, you know, we track who's checking out the shirt. Amazing. Amazing. That's a powerful little bonus like round, Paul. Thank you for yeah. that. That's amazing. I love that this is evergreen. Like you can you kind of rinse and repeat for all the other upcoming shows and you have it set up to do so with campaign links and uh and that sort of thing yeah mm-hmm. boom yeah might as well let me get myself set up actually let's do the five uh 724 show promo and then i've got the model there and then i can just uh now i'll have to adjust it a little bit because again it's in tucson most of our people are, are based here in phoenix uh-huh. um but i'm assuming it could probably be the same maybe the call to action in this case is Share it with your Tucson friends. Yeah, so there's a couple little little copy changes and things that you need to do, but yeah, wow, every man. Every show's a little different, you know? Awesome. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty rad. And well, that's man. what we got going on. And let's, let's look at our... So let's look at our numbers here. So 36 requests, 23 downloads. What's our... Uh, let's do the math here. So there you go. It's, you know, 63.8% redemption rate. Yeah. That's pretty killer. Um, four, wow, there's four poster downloads. I didn't know there was that many poster downloads. Wow. But what I want to look at is the uh, the engagement stats. And you know, oh, here it is. Here's, here, here's how engaged my list is. 14 people have clicked within the past month. About 60, you know, 30 to 60 days and 35 are cold. So now at any point in time, I can click and see who are these cold people, try and figure out who they are, you know, try and re-engage them, something like that. That's so cool, man. That's mm-hmm. so cool. Yeah, I'd love to see, uh, <laughs> I just love to see how you're using Infusionsoft for your band. It's so cool. A lot of, you know, a lot of people would just get so businessy with it. But, man, you can have a powerful experience for any other project, too, if you just use what you you know about marketing automation and apply it. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we throw a festival, too, and that's what I used it for, for uh, to, to promote the festival. That's and that, cool. was, that was fun. That was a blast. That's cool. Well, Paul, thank you so much for, for taking the time to, to do this interview and just really walking us through everything. Um, if someone wants to get in contact with you and say thank you for all this awesome info, like what's the, the best way to do that? Is it to go to the Facebook page on like uh, it? <laughs> I mean, hey, we're always we're always good to have fans. But again, I, I get it. It's niche. Not everybody likes heavy metal. Not everybody gets it. That's cool. I don't want to push that on you, you know, to each their own. If people appreciate it, you know, give me a shout out on Twitter at Voyix. Um, I'm on LinkedIn. You know, feel free to endorse me. Cool. Uh, actually, I just added a new skill of automated experience design cool. because uh, I've, I 
firmly believe that just like, you know how today you can go to a community college, take an HTML course and whatever. Well, back in the 80s, HTML was only for those like super massive nerds, right? But yeah. now it's like an entire field. I very much believe that automated experience design is one of those fields. So give it like two, three decades, there's going to be courses in college about designing an automated experience. And what are the tenets of that? And so I just added that skill to my LinkedIn and uh, feel free to endorse me for that if and only if you think that I actually have experience in automated experience design. You yeah. Know, I want you to lie. Um, but I mean, that's that's pretty much it. You know, tweet me, LinkedIn me, you know, bug Josh for me, you know, yeah. Joshua for me. I will. Uh, I'll, I'll love to be bugged. Cool, man. Well, I'm going to put all of these links and, and all of this at infusioncast.co slash Paul Sokol. And um, this will be out in, in a little while. Hopefully when we can line it up with this new uh, campaign update. But yeah, man, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, Joshua. This has been a blast. And uh, it's thanks for letting me contribute because... I can't sit down and do what I just did with my bandmates. They don't get it. Like, they know that I'm doing cool stuff, you know, and I can't really sit down and do it with, you know, coworkers or whatnot because they just don't particularly care. So this is the first <laughs> time I've got to give a real deep under-the-hood dive into exactly what we're doing with somebody that can not only understand what's going on but also appreciate it. And so thanks for letting me share this with your tribe. It's, it's been a fantastic Friday. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, thanks for coming on the show. Yep, yep. Thanks for joining us on this episode of InfusionCast. Struggling to embed Infusionsoft web forms into your WordPress website? Head over to InfusionCast.co and download our free WordPress plugin, Fusion Forms. Fusion Forms allows you to easily embed beautiful Infusionsoft forms into any WordPress website with a simple shortcode. Thanks again for listening, and we'll talk to you in the next episode.